Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back. And today we shall discuss one of the most fundamental questions, which is apparent contradictions. Not contradictions. Apparent contradictions in astrology, which means two things, two domains, two perspectives, uh, two areas, or I could say two lines of astrology, or even within one line of astrology sometimes you see there are different things promised so then how do you know which is going to happen how do you know which one overrides the other well for example sometimes people ask me this question that oh my son is in debility or my son is in the eighth house or the twelfth house but my 10th Lord is exalted. So will I be, get name fame through my career or will I not? Another question. Jupiter is badly placed. It is afflicted or it's not well supported by other planets. But my 5th Lord is exalted. So will I have children or will I not? What kind of children will I have? Venus is exalted but 7th Lord is debilitated. So... How do we judge this? Plus minus. One is positive, the other one is negative. So plus minus, they will cancel out each other, right? Well, does it work like that? Actually not, because the example is given. If you have salt and sugar, suppose you have a glass of water, you put some one teaspoon of sugar and you mix it and you eat it, drink it. You feel, ah, oh, it's very sweet. Then you take one fourth tablespoon of salt and you mix it and then you drink then what happens does it become tasteless does the sweetness go away no the in fact now the sweetness is there but now there's another flavor there is salt in it so therefore it is highly crucial it's very 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 crucial that we do not play this a game of physics which is you know plus minus plus minus good bad good bad good bad good bad good bad 99 percent of the times people are dancing between these two zones this is good this is bad this is good this is bad this is nice this is not so nice it doesn't work like that <laughs> which means if a planet is having challenges that challenges will be there no planet can cancel out those challenges but suppose some planet is helping that planet. Then what happens? So you can take this example. So suppose a person is uh, suffering from depression. Very serious depression. Now when you are in depression, then there are two options that you have. Either you take guidance, you elevate your consciousness spiritually, you realize that these things don't matter after all, you know, my materialistic stuff. I mean, it matters, of course, but not beyond a certain extent because I am a spirit soul. I am not this body. Nothing related to this body is mine. Yes? Or you have another option. You totally sink into it and you get into drugs or pornography, prostitution or... You start smoking or, or you start drinking or you start gossiping hmm? or you start indulging in sugar. These are the things people do when they are not happy. Okay. So now suppose somebody is undergoing depression. So let's take the example of a planet. You know, planet is badly placed. Let's take the example. <laughs> suppose let's take moon. Okay. So moon is badly placed maybe. Okay. Now, forget about what is good or bad place. Just, just think moon is quote-unquote badly placed according to astrology. And now suppose Jupiter is aspecting that moon. Okay, And let us assume that Jupiter is well placed. Okay, like Just assume it's well placed. So then what, what happens? The person doesn't get into depression? No, it's not like that. The person might get into depression, but that aspect of Jupiter will help the person to come out of that depression. But it will not prevent that depression from coming. 
yes that now i i don't mean to say that if a moon is badly placed you will have depression no i just give it as an example for a planet you can have an exalted moon and still you might be in depression your sun may be exalted your lagnesh may be exalted and still you might be in depression okay so therefore we have to understand that there is no contradiction in astrology it is just like a harmony which we are not able to read and because we have been trained in the uh, modern scientific domain you know, in the modern modern science so their things are very discreet you know. it's like uh, yes either it's yes or no so we think okay a planet is either good or it is bad no it's not like that planet because see any planet wherever it is sitting it will be badly placed from some house it will be in dusthana from a particular house so for example if you have a planet in the ninth house it is in dusthana from the 10th house yes it is in the 12th from the 10th and from the 4th house also it is not well placed it is in the 6th and from the second house it is in the 8th so from 2 4 and 10 it is badly placed all right so similarly fifth house badly placed from the 6th and from the 10th of course okay so therefore we 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 need to understand this that no planet either it is exalted or it's in mool trikon or in own sign will always be good for you never good for you means for every area of life and a planet which is very badly placed smashed afflicted debilitated it's miserable down trodden and it's in ruins totally or it's in a dusthana it will never be totally bad for your horoscope which means it will be well placed from a certain house and the entire horoscope will decide will that planet function in a good way or in a bad way for a particular event of life because in general there are very less houses in astrology which are good for every event of life so one such house is the second house and the other is the fifth and the other is the ninth so although the fifth and the ninth are dusthanas from the 10th house they generally do not create obstructions in career generally they don't unless they are linked with the dusthanas okay so but except these two three houses all the houses have some serious issues when it comes to some other house okay so for example third house the moment third house gets activated in dasha you may travel why because it's 12th from the fourth it's the loss of the house of residence it's which is your fourth house yes so it is not good for residence if you want to have a life where you want to stay in your hometown home country life long then that then that may not happen if your third house is very prominent okay um, so similarly sixth house it's the denial of marriage it's the house of divorce separation when badly placed or in a bad way and in a good way it is celibacy and self control and brahmacharya trying to uh, preserve your semen not waste it and these kind of things so Sixth house is a very good house if somebody is wanting to uh, follow a life of brahmacharya or sannyas. For them, the seventh house is a disaster. But for a normal person who is married, for that person, the sixth house is like it's like the end of their life <laughs> because then they they might get separated from their partner. So therefore, you have to first ask yourself. which are the areas that i want to improve in my life which are the areas that i want to focus in my life depending on that you have to see which placements are good or bad not in a blind way that oh this planet is placed here it's good it's bad okay so then you will not be able to see any contradiction because otherwise what will happen you will get confused have you, has it ever happened with you you have looked at a horoscope and you see crazy placements one exalted planet and the other one is debilitated so how do you reconcile 
how do you know if an exalted planet is good for you or it is not good for you yes have you seen people with exalted planets ruining their lives and have you seen people with debilitated planets also ruining their lives yes you will see why does this happen because their focus of life is not supporting this energy of the exalted planet or i i could say it can be the other way around also the exalted planet is opposing the flow of the chart which means it is trying to take you in a different direction or if a planet is in the Igbala especially hmm? then your life becomes like a tus so then you can say that oh there is a tus but it is still not a contradiction remember there are no contradictions in astrology there's absolutely zero contradictions everything is crystal clear okay so for example uh, somebody may think, oh, if my, as I said in the beginning, if the fifth lord is exalted, or if the fifth lord is well placed, and Jupiter, who is the Karaka for children, is not very well placed, then what can happen? Well, there are a million things which can happen. I have, I have made a video on Karaka, so if you have not watched the video on Karaka, secrets of Karakas, I think, or you can just type Karaka's exotic astrology. You can see that on screen. So in that I spoke that the house or the house lords or a planet sitting in a house gives the results of that house, the physical results. But the ultimate fruit of that house is dependent on the Karaka. Now it's, it's like imagine there's a mango tree and there are five mangoes. So you get five mangoes. That is like the that's like the house or the planet where the planet the house where the planet is sitting so fifth house means maybe you know five fruits <laughs> but then how how are those fruits how they are they're salty they are sweet they are sour do you like those fruits five mangoes five strawberries do you like them that is dependent on the karaka now here's the interesting thing Suppose some person says that I don't want to marry and I don't want to have children also. Okay. And then suppose uh, this fifth lord is well placed and Jupiter is badly placed. Then that's a totally different story. And you take it the other way around. Person doesn't want children, he doesn't want to get married. And then Jupiter is very well placed but the fifth lord is not well placed. So then that is a totally different story. But that's not a contradiction, you see. Every house, every planet, every Karaka has their specific unique role. Okay. It is like a garden. In a garden, when there is a white rose and there's a red rose, they are there simultaneously. They will always be there. You, Wherever you go, you will see the white and the red. You, you can't say that the white and the red are just making each other disappear. No. Never. So always remember the example of depression that I said. If a person doesn't have depression, he may not run into depression in the horoscope. I mean. But if the person has depression and that planet which is giving him depression is supported by a good planet, then he will be in depression but he will try to come out of it which means you know he will do spiritual practices take health or take medication or whatever otherwise the person will just be depressed and do all the useless stuff which people do most of the people these days so there you see it, it doesn't nullify depression depression will be there okay now depending on the strength of that good planet we have to judge will he be able to come out of the depression after taking sufficient empowerment and treatment will he or not now, if the power of that good planet is more than the power of this planet which is giving him depression then he will one day come out of that depression that is where you can say you know five minus four is equal to one that is how you can judge. But that doesn't mean this 4 becomes 0. 
okay sometimes it can be 4 minus 5 uh, it, it can be you know the 4 can be for the good planet 5 can be for this planet which is living in depression so then 4 minus 5 is minus 1 so then the person will still remain in depression okay so once you know what every planet does what every house does what are the karakas then the divisional charts when you know their importance then you will not be confused then you won't feel that there's a contradiction that they are fighting no venus is exalted in d1 debility in d9 cut ho gaya cancel ho gaya no not like that venus exalted in d1 will give a totally different flavor and the funny thing is that flavor is irrespective of how it is placed in the d9 and the debility or exaltation is d9 in d9 will also give you results irrespective of how it is in the lagna chart now of course then how do you reconcile the thing is when you finally experience it you will you will not get the mixture of both the results don't think like that you will you will get both the results independently but the only thing is you have to know how to judge that and you have to know how to reconcile that all right so uh, generally what happens sometimes astrologers when they are uh, you know consulting clients to not make that client feel bad about their horoscope what they will do is sometimes uh, the client will tell uh, the client has seen a youtube video where he has heard you know, a debilitated venus means a bad married life okay let's assume he has heard like this and then the Client will go and ask to be astrologer. Oh, my dear sir, my dear madam, my Venus is debilitated, so I will never have good relations, right? And now the astrologer, out of his or her goodwill, does not want to make this person feel bad. So he or she may uh, give a consoling answer. But no, no, don't worry. It is in trines, in navamsa, blah, 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 blah. That is all fine. You can do as consulting. There's no problem. Psychologically, to uplift the needs and to not make that person feel even more worse that is fine but as an astrologer you should not take solace if venus is uh, you know debilitated in d1 and then it's in d9 in the ninth house or fifth house no that 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 debility will hold hold importance irrespective of where venus is in the navamsa the navamsa can help that debilitated venus to come out of the debility but it doesn't mean that the, the, that the debility will not exist all right so as a matter of consoling the client you can say that yeah, yeah you know actually it's well placed in the d9 so don't worry much but then when you are doing your own analysis you must take that into consideration you you cannot take so take so less that oh venus is there here or then this debility is cancelled. No. You have to understand this debilitated Venus in the uh, in the Lagna chart, what kind of a flavor it will give. And this good Venus, which is in the Navamsha, well-placed Venus, how is it helping that Venus to come out of the debility? Depending on what the person wants. Again, going back to square one. Hmm? All right, so that is it from my side. And if you want to resolve the contradictions, you must know how things work in astrology. All right, and for that, you must study, you must learn about the different areas. Only then you can understand how the harmony is coming out. Okay, not that they're just fighting and canceling out each other, not like that. All right. Thank you very much for your patience and if you want a consultation from me then you can go to the website down in the description section and if you're new then please subscribe and click the thumbs up if you like the video and share it with somebody who is confused with exaltation debilitation and karakas and lords <laughs> all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him